This will take you less than 10 minutes and by the end of this you'll have a secure Node.js API running on DigitalOcean server with a free SSL certificate and with a connected custom domain from Namecheap. I have broken down the process into four small steps and an optional bonus chapter for implementing security on your Node.js API. So the first step is to create a DigitalOcean account and set up the server. If you don't have an account yet, you can sign up to DigitalOcean with my referral link that will be in description and get $200 in credit over next 60 days. And once you sign up, you can create a server by clicking on create and choosing droplets from here. When creating your droplet, choose a server and region that is closest to your end user. I will select Frankfurt in my case. Next, we need to choose the operating system. I'll leave this as default and I use Ubuntu for this. And for the CPU option, I recommend starting from a low tier because you can always upgrade later if you want to. And we need to choose an authentication method, which is how we will authenticate to our server. I recommend using SSH here and not password method. So you can click on new SSH key to add a key and now we need to generate this in our terminal. So if you're on Linux, Mac OS or Windows you can follow this process. But for Windows users without OpenSSH you need to install PuTTY and I will link also that in the description so you can follow along. So here we need to type SSH keygen and this will generate the SSH key pairs. Here it will ask you for the key name. I recommend setting up a separate named key for your server like the ID and underscore DigitalOcean and hit enter. And now it asks for a passphrase. You can enter a passphrase for extra security or you can leave this empty and hit enter twice. So that's it for generating the key. Now we just need to copy it and for that use the cat command followed by the path to your public key which is ssh slash the public key name and hit enter. And this is your public key. You need to copy this and paste it into DigitalOcean and also set a name for your SSH key and add SSH here. So in my case I already have one and I don't need to add it. And that's it, we can create our droplet. So now that we have created our droplet, in the second step we need to log into the server and install the necessary software. And for that go to the access tab of this droplet and click on launch droplet console. This will exchange the SSH keys and you will be logged in into your DigitalOcean server. So here we need to install Node and Git on the server. Let's clear the console and let's install the Node.js. For Node.js, first we need to install the NVM with this command. Copy and paste it into your terminal and hit enter. So we need to close and reopen the connection for our terminal to be updated. Or you can update it with the source command. And now we can install it with NVM install and the Node version that you use. In my case it's 16. So this will install the Node.js version. And we also need to install git so that we can pull your repository here. So do sudo apt install git dash all. It asks if you want to continue, choose yes, enter. And that is it for the installation step. Now in the first step we need to clone and prepare your app. For that go to your github repository that you want to clone. In my case it's this portfolio API and copy the URL of it. In case your repository is not public, you can log into GitHub account from the terminal in DigitalOcean and then clone it. But in my case it's public, so I can just clone it like this. So we will use git clone and your project link here and hit enter. And now we clone this repository. If you do ls, you can see your repository here. So now we need to cd into that and install the dependencies with npm install. After the dependencies are installed, now we need to move our environment variables here if you have them. So in my case the environment variables are located in the root directory. So I need to create this there in the root directory and paste the content there. So I will copy this from here. Go to the terminal and do touch.env and if you do ls-a we will see our env file created here. Now we need to modify it with nano.env, hit enter and now we are inside of this file. We just need to paste our environment variables here and then hit Ctrl X and Y for saving it and enter. In my case I'm deploying an SJS API so I also have an additional step of building it with npm run build which will do nest build for me. So I will go to the terminal and run npm run build and this will generate this dist folder that you see here in our server. And that's it for this one. And in the last step you need to keep your app always running with some process manager. Let's install the PM2 process manager globally. We will do npm install pm2 
at latest and dash g for installing this globally. Hit enter and this will install the PM2 process manager. And then you can run it with PM2 start and your entry file. So if you're just using a JavaScript project, this might be just server.js in your case. In my case, it's in this folder and it's the main.js file. If I hit enter, you can see that we now have this process running and we have our server up and running. But let's also do PM2 startup Ubuntu. And this will make sure that your app is always starting whenever the server is rebooted. And that's it, now our application is always running in the background and we can verify this by copying the IP address of our server. Go to the IP address of your server and the port that you are using. In my case it's 8000 and a valid URL, for example in my case it's the contacts. And hit enter. Now you can see we are getting a response back and our server is up and running. So that's it for the deployment and you can use Node.js API like that. However, if you'd like to add a couple of security considerations and also remove this port from here so that you can listen to the default port, stick around for the bonus section. So first let's enable UFW firewall by doing UFF enabled. Here choose yes and hit enter. And now we need to allow SSH, HTTP and HTTPS ports with this command and hit enter. And let's verify this by doing UFV status. And you can see that HTTP, HTTPS and also SSH ports are now allowed and all the other ports are disabled. Now let's configure Nginx as a reverse proxy so that our API is available on the default port instead of 8000 or whatever your API port is. So for that let's install Nginx with this command in our server. And this will install nginx here. Now let's edit the configuration file with this command nano and this path for the configuration file and hit enter. So this opens up the configuration file and we are mainly interested in changing the server name and location here. So in front of the server name you can place the domain that you are planning to use. In my case I already have the domain that I purchased so I do hikesimonian.site and I also do the same with free w's. And in the location just copy and paste these lines, you can also find them in the description. Just make sure that the port is correct, so in my case it's 8000 and in your case this may be different. And let's save this by doing Control X and choose yes and enter. Now we just need to restart our nginx server by doing these commands in order. So this is the first one which will stop the apache. And these next two commands will restart our nginx server. So this means that we configured our default port to listen to our API. So now we can just remove our port from here and hit enter and this should work as expected. And in fact all the other ports are now disabled except for 80 and 443. Now we need to connect our domain to that server. I'll be using Namecheap for domain registration because I find it to be the easiest to set up and also most affordable. You can buy domains here for as cheap as $1. And if you also plan to use Namecheap, you can sign up using my affiliate link and I'll receive a small commission from it. So once you create your account, go to the domains and search for the domain you are planning to use. In my case, it's a portfolio API, so I will use my name and hit enter. So you can find some that are just $1. In my case, I will choose this one since this is the backend, so it's not very important. I will add this to my card and check out. And we need to go to the networking tab to connect this domain to our droplet. Go to the domains tab in the networking and here paste your domain that you have just purchased and hit add domain. In this step point the 1a domain to your droplet, hit create record and we need to create another record with three w's and also point to that same droplet and create record. Now you can see all of our domains were linked to the same droplet. We need to also go back to our Namecheap account and click on manage here in the domain list. Here in front of name servers we need to select custom DNS and here we need to copy paste these values from the digital ocean. So go back from here and copy the NS1 to NS3 addresses and paste them here like this and click on this small check mark which will save our changes. And this will link our domain to our digital ocean droplet. And as a final step in our bonus section, let's also add SSL to make sure we are using HTTPS for our server. And for that, again, go back to Access and launch your droplet console. And here you just need to copy and paste these commands one by one. So the first one is this, which will install the certbot. Next, we need to prepare the certbot with this command. 
And lastly, we need to run this command to generate an SSL certificate. So here in the first step, you need to give it an email. Next, you need to read the terms of service and accept them with Y and hit enter. Next, it asks if you are willing to share your email address. I will choose no and hit enter. So here you need to select the domain names from this list that you see here. And for that, we will do one space two, which means that we are selecting both of them to run over HTTPS and hit enter. And that's all for this process. Let's go to our domain to verify it. So go to your domain and slash some existing path and hit enter. First of all, you can see that our domain was connected to our droplet and we're getting back a valid response. And second, if you click here, you can see that connection is secure and you can see your certificate here, which was generated by Let's Encrypt. And just be aware that this certificate will expire every 90 days. So whenever it expires, you can just come back and type this command, which will renew your certificate for another 90 days. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more tutorials like this.